Listen closely. No, seriously, can you hear that? No way. So we are back and boy, did I finish, whoop, careful Joe, boy, did I finish 2022 with a bang. I found this pristine 1995 X4 717 XP and guys, I think this is as clean as you're going to find. So as far as bucket list finds go, this baby is right near the top. Now, apart from the obvious, why have I bought a second generation XP? Well, you guys have told me since day one, the X4 holes are one of the best, if not the best holes Sea-Doo ever made. The X4 holes are rich in race history, and when they were first introduced, they took the race scene by storm. I'm pretty sure, but the X4 name was the original code name for when they were developing these holes. Whichever way you cut it, the X4 holes are legendary. Anyone that you talk to that was around in the 90s or rode these or raced these, basically everyone synonymously says these holes are insane. For many, the riding characteristics of the X4 hole is unlike anything else from its time with the perfect power to weight ratio. So naturally, I had to get my hands on one of these for myself. So at this point, I can literally hear, ready to go, the keyboard warriors, I mean, viewers, small group of viewers may I add, ready to bum bash, yeah but it's not the XP800, you should have got the 787, not the 717, blah 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 blah. I know, I know, the XP800, the 787 is the daddy if you're talking X4 holes. It was so good, they kept the 787 hole design and engine all the way to the late 80s, 80s, late 90s, when they changed it and just essentially rebadged it as the SPX, which was a clever move by Sea-Doo because they kept the design that people loved. So why didn't I buy the well, there is logic. A dream ski for me on my bucket list is the 1999 SPX 800. The 99 SPX used the same 787 engine. Now, the SPX is essentially identical to the 1996 XP 800, and it even had the throwback silver hump seat to the original XP 800 in 95, but importantly, it benefited from years, from 95 to 99, incremental improvement. As with any model that spans multiple years, the engineers will refine the product year on year. Years of development allow those those engineers to refine the product from when it was first conceived all the way through. One of the biggest criticisms that I get thrown at me all the time about the XPDI is, yeah, well, it wasn't that refined. Well, the reality is it ran for two years. Can you imagine if the XPDI continued in that format for another three or four years? It'd be the same scenario as this XP. It'd be the same scenario as the Sea-Doo Spark. The Sea-Doo Spark, when it was first introduced in 2014, that had years of improvement over the years. That is natural. But for me, getting my hands on an SPX is something I want to do down the road. So my way of looking at it is by getting an SPX 800 from 99, you're getting the most refined 787, and essentially, you're kind of getting an XP 800 1996, but an SPX skin. And controversial opinion, but I actually think the 99 SPX is as sexy as the 96 XP. Don't shoot me. That yellow, black, and the throwback silver hump seat for me is the sweet spot. Okay, so I'm going off track here a little bit, but as I've said, number one, I want to get an SPX 99 down the road to point where I'll be able to compare the power ratio of the 787 to the 717. For me, the X4 hull is the most important detail to this. I know power is important, guys, but you guys always rave about the characteristics of the handling, and the power is the secondary consideration. And reason number two, I need to take this off to give my explanation. Plus, a lot of you guys have told me how the 717 is an easier engine to work on as it doesn't have the RAV valves that the XP800 does. I've also spoken to a lot of you guys about the comparable difference, real world difference between the power between the 717 and the 787. And whilst it goes without saying, you've all told me that the 787 is gonna be faster. They say that the key for this, Joe, is you're gonna experience for the first time the X4 hull and all of the great agile and nimble characteristics that the X4 is renowned for. The power is just the cherry on top of the cake, which, as I said before, I will hopefully experience down the road with the 787 SPX. What am I for? Now it goes without saying, if a pristine 1995 or 96 Six, XP800 lands in my lap, I'm not going to say no, I'll do the right thing, but that's the logic guys of why I went for the 717. 
Plus, logic aside, just look at this example. I mean, I don't think they come much cleaner than this. I know I say it a lot, but it is very, very clean. Whilst I try to buy all of my skis with logic and not heart and how it fits into the collection, I think if any ski came up in this clean of a condition, I would struggle to say no. So when I saw this ski come up on Facebook Marketplace and the ad literally said, it was almost like perfectly created for me, owned for the last 17 years, I was thinking, this is literally my dream ad, what is the catch? If someone could make up dream owner history for me, then this was literally it. I reached out to Nigel almost instantly as soon as I saw the ad. Nigel was amazing, he came straight back to me, sent me lots more photos, even a walk around video. <laughs> Hi Joe, um, just starting this, if I'm cold, all it's had done is a compression test. Yes, there is a few marks on it, but all the seams and the stitching seems to be good. No rips or tears in it. A walk around video, bless him, of not only the ski and the engine in the startup, but also the cover, showing any little small details or defects. He was super honest. I subsequently spent an hour on the phone, not only talking about this particular example, but just Nigel's love for jet skiing, wave jumping back in the day, and what basically he'd experienced from riding XPs throughout the years, which, which for me was another great indicator that he was a good guy to be buying a ski from. The only issue is, and you literally can't write this stuff, me and Megs were going on a three week trip to America on the Monday, I saw this, the ad for this ski on the Friday. So you can imagine, I pitched this to Nigel. Nigel, I want this ski, I'm very serious. Luckily for me, I had my YouTube as accreditation to say, look, I promise I do buy skis. I am legit. Can you hold this ski for three weeks? Don't let it go. Luckily for me, I think Nigel saw the fact from my YouTube that I was a bit of a sea -doo fanatic and he thought, well, actually, that's probably a good owner to let this ski go to. When you own something for 17 years, I can only imagine that letting it go to anyone is hard. So hopefully I'm a good person to let skis go to. So Nigel was a man of his word. He held it for three weeks. The whole time I was away, I was thinking, is this ski going to be gone when I get back? Luckily, when I got back, I gave Nigel a call. We arranged the collection day and if you want to see that collection day, then watch this video here. Is it here on YouTube? Yes, yeah, here on YouTube. <laughs> watch this video here. It's an epic find. Nigel is a really cool guy. From top to bottom, we inspect the ski, start it up, do all the usual things, and obviously do a deal because it's now here on the driveway. So what's next? Well, as I've just raved about for the last 20 minutes, this is a very clean XP, but as always, there's always Joe things to do. So first things first, this ski, take this off carefully, needs a full top to bottom service. All lines are going to be changed, all the filters are going to be changed, we'll obviously check the fuel tank, check there's no cracks or anything in it, obviously all the pumps will be checked, and no, we're not going to be converting it to premix before everyone puts it in the comments, it's going to stay with the original pump. Spark plugs will be changed, carbs will be cleaned, all the fuel, sorry, all the water lines will be checked, checking it's all behaving correctly, VTS unit will actually be looked at, basically everything top to bottom will be gone through to ensure by the time this hits the water, it's absolutely spot on. I can't experience an extra hole for the first time and have any issues. Obviously the engine's super tidy but after years of sitting in Nigel's garage it is covered in dust and I do think I can get this at least 50% cleaner. The ski didn't actually come with a battery which is sometimes a good thing because they typically have old wet cell batteries. This will be replaced with a new AGM battery. We'll check the pump, have it disassembled, check the wear ring, the impeller, and importantly, we'll add an anti-rattle cone which honestly does wonders for the actual startup noise on these skis. Then there's the seat. Now the seat is in very, very good condition. However, sadly, there are some small tears and rips in places. But the thing is, this is OEM and it's got the original printed Sea-Doo purple, may I add, logo on the side. Now what you see with a lot of people is they'll change these to new vinyl covers and they'll basically just do away with the logo. So they'll just have a standard yellow vinyl cover. And that's a real shame for me. So I'm gonna get this repaired. Now, whether I can get those patch repaired, I'm not quite sure because marine-based salts and things typically don't do very well with sort of the actual filling and putties that you can use on some level of repairs, <gasps> mouthful. So it might be that I have to make the stencil. I can, I know I can source the actual vinyl. That's not particularly hard, but I might have to make the stencil and then actually obviously respray the purple logo, which is a bit of a DIY artist and craft session, but it probably be quite helpful for you guys to see. But essentially we need to end up with a cover, which is as good as this, and it doesn't compromise the overall OEM feel. 
Then there's the OEM purple grips. Now these are original, but sadly what you used to see with the OEM ones is they tend to degrade and the rubber goes really sticky and tacky. Now whilst I want to keep OEM, sadly they no longer make these, so you can't really source them anymore. Now the closest I've seen is a product called the mushroom grips. Now that is a real thing, I'm not making it up. And they look quite similar. They're a little bit different to the OEM ones. Um, but guys, put in the comments if you know of any grips that look pretty similar to the OEM ones. They've obviously got to be purple, naturally. Or if you have a pair of OEM ones and you want to sell them to me and I pay good money, but that is something I need to resolve. Then we have the handlebar cover. Now these are notorious on the XPs for picking up dirt. They almost soak it up, but typically what happens is people don't put a protectant on them over the time. So any scuffs or marks time to pick it up. Now, luckily for me on this particular one, it's not too bad. And I know already with a bit of the trusted tar remover, this will all come up really good. And then I'll use a 303 protectant on it to actually give it a UV protection. Hopefully it stays clean for the foreseeable future. Is it going? All right, okay. <laughs> take the shoes off. I've not got the trusty Crocs on today. I've got trainers on, but nevertheless, there's no excuses. Never shoes. Oh yes, I've waited the whole video for the final shot to sit on it and be an X4 racer. Guys, that's it for this video. I know you wanna see more of it. I've tried to give you loads of B-roll sexy shots of this, but obviously hit the subscribe button because there's gonna to be tons of videos coming on this X4 soon. You guys all raved about it. You've built the X4s up to be almost gladiatorial. That's not right, is it, Meg? It's not gladiatorial, almost heroic. Yeah, that, that kind of works. You've built them up so much that I'm expecting big things. Now, hopefully when I get on this and ride it, I do feel that spectacular nimble handle, nimble handle, Joe, get your words out. Hopefully I experience that playful, really, really nimble, agile characteristics. I must admit, even sitting on it, I can just imagine that this ski is gonna be so, so nice to ride. That's the seat clipping in, don't worry, nothing's breaking. But honestly, guys, I really appreciate you as always. I always say thank you at the end of these videos, but I like to say thank you because you guys watching the videos allow me to keep buying them and making these videos. There's tons of content coming, not only on this ski, but on lots of other skis in the series. And as I said in my last video, there is something exciting coming to the channel, which is gonna be pretty epic for the channel. It's gonna push the channel in a really, really cool direction. And it's gonna hero these skis in, I keep using the word unorthodox, but I wanna keep it mysterious for you guys as to what's gonna happen next. So do the usual bit, hit the subscribe button. And as always guys, let's keep the classics alive. Whoa! Big wave bar. Yeah. It kind of sounded real. I think I actually bossed that then, the noise on that time. I've been doing it wrong. I've been over exaggerating. You just need the wind noise. Oh! No? Do you want to get on and have a go? Megan's going to now, we're now going to switch. Whoever's waited to the end of this video, you get the privilege of seeing Megan riding an X4. Yeah, you are. Come on. Go jump on. Got Crocs. Crocs on. I'm a bit nervous because it tipped up for you earlier though. Funny thing is, funny thing is, I've actually gone on a ski with you with a hat on and a coat before because you've dragged me out in the sea when it's freezing. Rim, rim, rim. <laughs> Keep the classics alive.